guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Wednesday, April 10th. Uh, we're recording the day after the Celtics lost to the Bucks. If you want our thoughts on that game, make sure to check it out on the channel or on podcast platforms. Uh, our full thoughts is in, I think the video is like 18 minutes long, but it came out uh, yesterday as you're listening to this. Uh, a reminder, as always, leave a like on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to the How About Them Celtics YouTube channel. Uh, and if you're listening on podcast platforms, follow us there. Leave us five stars and a review. Uh, we'd appreciate it very much. Uh, comment on the YouTube video, what's popping for a chance to win a $10 in pop Nito gift card and use code CLNS on prize picks for up to a hundred dollar deposit matching. Uh, all right. Let's get into it. Joe Missoula went on the radio. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at, oh, kind of laughing at you. I went on Twitter and I saw you do the what's up brother. And I'm watching what's up, the brother? jazz, the jazz go in and everybody's doing it. They, they Walker Kessler was way too excited about it, by the way. Well, you're not a sketch guy. You're not familiar with sketch. I, like, I, I'm aware of sketch. Through, like you understand it. So, uh, for anybody in the comments, what's up, brother? I assume we know we know the uh, the finger. You need to do it. So I told Cam, uh, our friend Cam to to buy of Celtics Lab and Celtics Wire. I was at a game with him covering it. And I turned to him. I go, Cam, you're a history teacher, right? And I go, what grade do you teach? He goes, tenth grade. I go, Cam. Next time you go into class, just enter the room and just go, what's up, brothers? And you just like, that's all you got to do. Just enter the room, say hello, say what's up, Take brother. Some balls. And they will, uh, I guarantee, and he he doesn't know. He doesn't know like sketch at all. So he was just like, what are mm. you talking about? And so he saw, so it's Cam tagging me in a clip on Twitter of the jazz, you know, social media person going up all the jazz players saying, what's up, brother? Uh, and they were all confused. I saw one. The Grizzlies did it too with Marcus. No fucking clue. What's up, brother? Yeah, not shocked. No idea. Not shocked. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, first thing we're getting into as my Google Docs decides to act up. Um, Joe Mazzula went on. Uh, Zolak and Bertrand uh, in 98.5. He talked about a bunch of stuff, uh, but perhaps most notice, notably um, how he views the Celtics job as well as a potential path to the NBA Finals. Uh, <laughs> he said, quote, I could ever imagine having a job where I wouldn't wake up and want to be the absolute best at it. That's been the coolest moment about this job is finding freedom and the peace and the love and the joy uh, of that pressure. And I feel like our guys this year, regardless of what's going to happen, they have that talking about sort of the pressure of playing in Boston, the pressure that the Celtics have on them because they are the favorites to win the title. Um, but Joe also went in the studio um, and talked about the path to the final. So we can watch that clip here and then sort of break down the whole interview. Sam, I know you watched it closely, so we can uh, I, watch yeah, I got, and then react. I got about a third of the way through it before we got started here. But <laughs> pretty cool. Like Joe goes in the studio with them, which I personally think is cool. Jack and I doing a show like this. It's pretty, pretty cool that he would go sit down with a pair of local mm-hmm. radio guys. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a listen. This is Joe on Zolak and Bertrand. Now is the one of the things we're studying now is the trajectory towards, um, you know, getting to that point, right? And uh, if you take a look at back, um, you know, one of the things I've been reading is like 11 rings just to kind of see the process towards championship teams and mm-hmm. how they handle regular seasons and playoffs. And if you take a look at all the teams from the book that they talked about, every journey to the finals looked completely different, mm. like completely different. Um, one year, the, the Lakers, what, lost one game? It was the first round right. to, the, to the Sixers. You take a look at the Bucks' journey a couple years ago. Every The uh, last three series, they were down in every one. They were down 0-2 to the Nets. They were down 0-1. Wait, 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 wait. The Hawks, and then they were down 0-2 to the Suns. I don't think that's a path that anyone would want to take, though. So, but here's right. the thing. like yeah. Nobody wants that. But right. at the end of the day, right. like you you have to be willing, just like the quote, you have to be go- willing to go through whatever it is that's necessary to go through to get to where you want to go. And sometimes you're in control of dictating the, that environment, and sometimes you're not. Like, you know, the other team is also trying to win the NBA championship, too. And I think you have to appreciate both sides of that. Like, yes, would it be ideal and what's best for our team from a physical mental emotional standpoint to fortunate enough to even win the first round or the second round in an easier fashion but that may not be what's necessary that may not be what the environment requires and i think it's that surrender of two is like if you go in with the expectation of like okay we need it to go this way uh, then you may not be ready to handle what the environment calls for you know and so i think that's important Typical Joe. Um, it sounds like something you'd say. And just to add on to what he's saying, like five years from now, 
no one's going to fucking remember how many games it took them to get out of the first round. No, if they win the championship, if they win it all, no one's going to care. No one's mm-hmm. going to care how they did it unless they go 16 and 0. That's the only way someone would care about how they got it. Done. I, I would and so, care. Yeah. Exactly. 16 and 0. I do a lot of care. And, and that's historic. But and like, no, if you get the job done, no one cares how it got you there. And I understand which one was that, like going back, like talking to it. Was that so one of the things studying now? No, uh, um, I think Bertrand was the one that was like, nobody the, wants to see that. Yeah, no, nope, nobody when, <laughs> wants to see you losing games. And and Obviously. Bertrand, thank you for speaking up for all of us because well, yeah, and I can't when, do it again. <laughs> Joe's not stupid though. Like Joe's not trying to fucking lose the games. Like he he comes back, he's you like, yeah, no shit. Year? No one wants <laughs> to lose. Well, yeah, but I know <laughs> games don't matter. But like he's not dumb. He's like he's not gonna have that same mindset in the playoffs. Obviously, right? Like no one wants to lose games in the playoffs. No one wants to lose games ever. But mm-hmm. sometimes it happens. Like you, no one's gone eighty two and zero ever. Even though the seventy three and nine Warriors didn't win the finals. You know what I'm saying? Like shit happened. You got exa- They were forever. But forever remember to. Clowns. You have to get through what you have to get through. And I agree with that point. And there's no point in like worrying about, oh, what if we like, we just, we can't have this series go to seven. That's a disaster. No, you worry about winning the game that's in front of you because that's all you can control in that moment. I really enjoy listening to Joe talk about mindset. The way he looks at things is different than most. Not to say that uh, thinking that you should win the game that's in front of you next before thinking about the entire series is outrageous. But all season, we've heard him talk differently about things. And there are parts of this interview where he kind of goes in and talks about, listen, like we're we're probably better at not complaining to the officials than last year, but it's not something we're necessarily working on. Like he just kind of goes in, details things in a unique way and makes the most of it. And he's gotten his team to buy into the process where they're going game by game, not getting too high on the high or low on the lows. And taking what's in front of them, like he kind of speaks on in the playoffs, and seeing what they can do with it. Can we get better at this? Can we improve that? There are so many things throughout the season we've seen them work on, especially in the last month where they're just kind of screwing around out there. And it's probably going to be nice to have in the back pocket in the playoffs when you run into a situation where you may need it. So I think what he's ultimately trying to do, which all coaches should be doing, if not you know, the probably not good coach is be prepared, be prepared when things don't necessarily go according to plan. It sucks. He talked about the Bucks game last night when it sucks for them that Giannis got hurt. If somebody gets hurt, you have to be ready to play through some of the other guys on this team. Not that we're all sitting here thinking someone's going to get hurt, but the way that the bench guys are utilized in close games in the fourth quarter, them getting the reps against the Kings and then different teams, but improving just two days after against Portland, they blew the game open instead of letting it get close. And it was the same group. Again, Portland is not as good of a team as Sacramento is, but it was a very similar group on the floor for the Celtics. And they instead took care of business rather than melting. I mean, I feel like people are just way too hard on Joe. Like just the general consensus. I'm not saying he's a perfect coach. He's not a perfect coach. They right? definitely are. They're definitely there's, there's stuff that's happening. But I had I forget who I was talking to yesterday. Where was I yesterday? Oh I was at I was at jury duty yesterday. Oh. And as I told you on the story, my high school gym teacher was on the jury with hmm. me. We were having a conversation. Um and he, he just asked me like what do you think about Joe? And the way I like explain it now is I think everyone wants like in their mind, the ideal coach and the best type of coach is Eric Spolstra. It is the guys who will X's and O's beat you in a one V one bat, like that type of thing. That's what everybody sees as the best coach in the world. Like that's what every coach needs to be or else they're not good enough. But I think Joe is really good at that stuff and he doesn't get credit for it enough. I believe that. And I, I think that is something that people underappreciate, but I think the thing that people fail to realize is the importance of like a Steve Kerr coach. Like this Celtics team has all of the talent. It has all, all of the guys. It has Tatum. It has Brown. It has Holiday, who is an all defensive player. Derek White, all defensive player. Christoph Porzingis, who is an all star. It even has Al Horford coming off the bench. Like 
sometimes you don't need this master tactician. You need somebody who can get a group of people together on the same page and working towards the same goal at the highest possible level for their talents. And I think there are few coaches in the NBA better at that than Joe Missoula. And I think you've seen that this year. Yes, the Celtics have all the talent in the world. Yes, the Celtics have on paper what many consider to be the best roster. But how many times have we seen the Brooklyn Nets fucking fumble and, and throw away mm. their the, the the Lob City Clippers have all this talent and not be able to get over the hump? The the um, both all, those teams had Blake and, Griffin and last year's team. Blake Griffin but, uh, confirmed cancer. <laughs> All of these examples Sorry, of Luke. teams. <laughs> let, me, let me make my point. <laughs> I'm Sorry, I'm making you laugh. <laughs> uh, all all of these teams have all the talent in the world with with whatever coach you put in front of them, but they don't get over the hump because they don't have the right person bringing them together. And it's yes, the Celtics have a better team on the floor. So they have a better record this year, but the Celtics don't have this many wins without the right person leading them in the right direction. And Joe Missoula has done a phenomenal job at that. And so I think when people hear this, their immediate thing is, well, this guy wants to lose game in the play. Like, shut, shut the fuck up. Like, th this is your past, you know, last year's failures, like infecting your mind and uh, swaying your opinion on this guy when this is a completely new team, a completely new season, a completely new Joe who has evolved and improved and learned from stuff that he had to learn on the fly last year. Correct. And it's not even close to the same thing. And so I think people need to do a better job of sort of taking in all the information, taking in what they're seeing rather than what they have seen in the past. And even last year, I know we were on the same page. He even got a bit, like way too of a, much of a bad rap last year. Uh, he did. He was, I think there was fair criticism appropriately it, it held accountable far. in the playoffs at yes. times. Um, okay. So, you're absolutely right. The mindset thing with this team is perfect. And, you know, we've we've talked about Missoula endlessly this season and how he fits with the team and everybody comparing him to Ime after last season. They didn't get back to the finals. and Everybody felt like they really should have. Fit is important. He's probably the right coach for this season's team. He might not have been the right coach for last season's team, so they made the changes. But the most impressive part about what he's done this season to me is – he seamlessly got these new guys put into the roster, put into the, the schemes on both ends of the floor, and he's made it work. Drew Holiday joined the team less than three weeks before the season tipped off. Like, let's not pretend like he was there all, all summer and Joe had time to think about it and he knew that Drew was going to be part of the team. Granted, Drew's been excellent. We heard the anecdote about him showing up and being like, I'll just do whatever. Like, you guys got it. I'm here. And it's helpful. But for Joe Missoula to get everyone to buy in all the time is so impressive because you hear horror stories about some coaches around the NBA where they don't have any respect from the players. They go in, they handle it incorrectly, and then guys don't want to listen to them. They think they're a joke. And this often doesn't happen with very talented rosters because guys are just frustrated with losing. And it does help that the Celtics win almost all the time. But to get these guys consistently engaged is very impressive to me. And his messaging is consistent. The players are bought in. And that is meaningful as we approach the playoffs. And my other thing, just going back to like the whole Steve Kerr expulsion thing. If this, like to your point, like his ability to integrate these guys into the team and, and find success. If this was the Spurs and they added, you know, two pieces next to Wembenyama. Greg Popovich would get a ton of credit for how he was able to, you know, bring them together. If this was the Warriors and let's say Kevin Durant joins the team, Steve Kerr would mm. probably get some credit for bringing them together and having them well, helping them play together. <laughs> I I don't know if Steve Kerr got a ton of credit for the I, I think he did. I think he did, did he? get I credit. I, I think so. More so than Joe has been getting. My like knee-jerk reaction I'll is put it this way. like, of course you're winning. You have Durant I'll put it this team. way. There probably weren't a lot of people in Golden State saying, fire Steve Kerr. <laughs> That's correct. There, <laughs> like, there are definitely more people that don't like Joe Mazzulla than people that mm -hmm. don't like Steve Kerr. But Kerr also had won a championship by then, in, in fairness to the, the haters. Not to say that they're right. See, that is my thing, though. Because... People are so caught up, and rightfully so, I get it. That is the bar in Boston, and uh, rightfully so, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But people are so caught up with holding him to that standard after a single season where he didn't know he was going to be the head coach of one of the most historic organizations ever until a month before the season started. Him failing to win the NBA Finals after getting 
to game seven in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I know the whole story of like, yes, they went down through all this stuff, but like history shows like they are holding him accountable for the singular season in which he didn't know he was going to be the head coach until a month before the year started when he wasn't fully prepared for that, when he wasn't able to fully integrate his ideals into the team, when he didn't have the head coaching staff that he wanted, that he was able to build, that he failed to get over that hump in that first season. They're holding it against him in the midst of one of the most historic seasons we've ever seen for a regular season team. Like, like they, they are taking all of that from that one year and ignoring all the context that happens and saying, Joe is not responsible for any of this. He, he didn't do anything right. It's just the players are really good. Like, that's not fair to me. That's That's the part that gets like, can can we have a little bit of like appreciation for the job he's done and you saying like i'm not saying you but like that is genuinely the mindset of people well, he hasn't won yet yeah he had one chance like half-hearted thrown into this gig like that like effectively a, a second bench guy head coach saying yeah here you go go lead this team go win a finals and he mm-hmm. said it himself in the jaded running party goes he goes i have no fucking clue what i was doing at the start like i'd banked on the players and so I remember the quote. He was like, yeah, there were some games I thought we played really well that we lost and some games that I thought I did a shit job coaching and we still won. Like there was a lot of stuff that I had to grow and learn from and people are holding that against him still to this day when I realistically, I think he should get a ton of credit for the job he's done. And Joe, Joe has been an amazing coach this year. And I know you hate the whole discussion thing, but just to contextualize how good he's been as a head coach, he's probably going to finish top three to five in coach of the year discussions. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch all the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. One of our favorite picks here at the How About Them Celtics podcast is the Drew Holiday blocks. It's usually 0.5. He just needs more than 0.5 blocks. That means one Drew Holiday block. And that pick is in the bag. Prize Picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Yeah, I mean, sure. He won't win. But no, but does, it's just a way to contextualize how good he has been. The fan base that he has done a very good job. He, <laughs> he has maximized probably the potential of the talent on this roster. They've done an excellent job of getting everybody involved, using everybody the correct way. He's getting a ton out of the bench guys, which really doesn't get talked about from his kind of point of view. It's more of, wow, Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser are really stepping up this year. Luke Cornett's done a great job. But the way that they're being used – is not necessarily the way that they've been used in the past. It's sort of new. Peyton Pritchard has more ball handling responsibilities when he's in the game. Sam Hauser is having offense run for him when he's off the ball. Luke Cornett is being put in uh, situations where he can succeed. He's great in the dunker spot. He's great as the role man. They've figured it out with all the experimentation that Joe does, and they have gotten him in the, the, the right places just to be like, look at this dunk. Definitely. And he shot three. <laughs> he did he did in fact shoot a three. Uh okay. Next thing we got uh is the main Celtics. The main Celtics won game one. Before we do that, can you hear the TV going on behind me? Can you hear it at all or no? Um, I don't hear it, but I also have music on, so hold on. Hold on, yeah. Mute it for a sec. Can, can you hear this? If you can't hear it, it's fine. No, I don't hear okay. it. Okay. Well, the only thing I brought it up is because it wasn't on when I started. So I think the dog stepped on the, the remote and turned it on. So I, I took my headphones off for a second to adjust and I heard a voice and it sh- I shit myself. I'm like, what the, the, the fucking hell dog? To my house? You got to throw that thing out of the house. Get ready to go Fuck. to the pound, buddy. It scared me, man. Anyways, main Celtics won game one of the G League finals uh, in dominant fashion, taking down the OKC Blue uh, with Big a Celtics 20 point win. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Demi had a big game. J.D. Davidson played well. Drew Peterson played well. Uh, two, I think uh, I need to pull up the stats exactly because uh, it's not the easiest to f- find the box scores for these games. Um, no, but it's not. 
uh, J.D. Davison, uh, Namish Keda, uh, and Drew Peterson. I know I played well. Oh, here we go. It's on ESPN. I find it. Um, <clears throat> Keda had 20 and 13 uh, and three blocks. Drew Peterson had 20, 11, 5, 3. Uh, Jordan Walsh had 15 and six JD Davis in 23 and 12 assists. Uh, and then the OKC blue had Shackleford put up 21 and nobody else put up 20 uh, Celtics right, dominant win uh, 106 86 win for the main Celtics uh, who are now one win away from their first G league title uh, in franchise history. That would be a fantastic way to kick off the spring. Now, wouldn't it? Just what watching all all the fellas up north go berserk. All, a lot of our commenters are up in Maine. Shout out Maine, Rui, 100%. Joey Spatula. Is Rui in, in Maine? House. I didn't know that. I, I yeah, knew he, he went he to the game. Yesterday. I just wasn't sure if he was like from <clears throat> Maine. Is what you're saying? But yeah, well, he's been to a Shout couple of these something. games. I don't. Maybe he's just a big fan. Maybe he does make the trip up there. I Respect. Know. Respect, man. Yeah, no. Shout out Maine Celtics. It's it's very cool to see them play well. Um JD good Davis excitement been really in the good. arena? Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Packed house. Time, Brad, man. borderline asleep, but everybody else was awake. Mm. Yeah, and Amish Kid has been apparently just babying opponents, like just making them look tiny. He has. Uh, which is I watched watch. that mixtape from the conference final. They didn't have a chance. Yep. They, they were <laughs> jumping. He was just looking like the most patient man on the planet. Carried mm. over to the big league. Who won G League MVP this year? I think it was Oscar uh, Tashiboy. I think it was. It might have been Mac McClung. It was Mac McClung. Good call. Yeah, Oscar won defense rookie of the year. He, I know he won something, and I only know because he is um, Giannis beef guy. Uh, <clears throat> but Mac McClung did in fact win G League MVP. He averaged. And now I'm just curious because I want to know. Um, what did he average? Oh, he averaged 26, 4.7, and 6.7. Yeah, that, that'll do it. Fair enough, Mac. Um, but I can't imagine. I'm pretty sure Not JD made um I'm pretty sure JD made like all G League team. Um, I know he had like a uh really, really good season for them this year, and so he, he should get a, a ton of credit for that. Um yeah, shout out man Celtics, man. It, it's fun to watch. They've they've been sort of like dominating <laughs> like they've sort of just been killing everybody this year uh kind of like the real Celtics. so it's good to them. see and it's good to see that there's a good <laughs> level of talent in the lower league like somebody like jordan walsh is getting reps but in the same role that he's supposed to play with the celtics i forget who had said that to us it might have been bobby but the fact that he's able to play defense rack up defensive stats and still score about 15 points is pretty good mm -hmm. it's ultimately <laughs> what the celtics probably want him to be able to do in the nba J.D. Davison, despite his shortcomings in the actual NBA, plays really well for Maine. Nimi is getting good reps underneath the basket, dominating on the glass. I love what I've seen from him, too. And Drew Peterson looks pretty fun, too. He, he's he's a better driver than he looks. Yeah, J.D. Davison is – oh, Drew Peterson. I see what you mean. I thought yeah. you said J.D. Davison. Um, well, he's, he's a yeah. high flyer, but – They both are. Uh, yeah, sorry, Shaq Harrison won – uh, defensive player of the year in the G League. My bad. He averaged 2.8 steals a game. Oscar Tshiboy won rookie of the year, averaging 16 and 16, uh, which is fucking insane Man. to say out loud. But uh, next thing, Jay King of The Athletic wrote an article on Kristaps Porzingis. Um, I don't want to read the whole thing uh, on here because I want everybody to go read it for themselves. Uh, give it the love it deserves. But it's titled, Kristaps Porzingis' career was at a crossroads. Then he learned to trust the numbers. And now Sam head and hands when he hears that. However, you know the numbers he learned to trust, Sam. Post-up numbers is what it post he learned to trust. And I wrote about the post-up numbers before the season. You did. You did. Not to, not um, to say <laughs> my man Jay did not put in the work. His article is no. far more extensive than mine. Just saying, he... hey, uh, Porzingis is good at the post, and so was Al Horford when he was in his prime. Mm. Yeah, no. Jay King talked to a lot of people for this. He talked to – I just want to get <clears> – <throat> excuse me, get their titles correct so I don't, I don't butcher it. He talked to Vulgaris, who was a – uh, team assistant on the Mavericks um, about like their work. Um, yep. Advanced analytics guy, uh, Bob Bulgaris uh, talked to him and basically said, <laughs> apparently this is the only story I want to highlight from it. Cause it like shows just how like averse to post-ups uh, the Mavs and he were, hmm. um, <clears throat> they were playing a game against the Lakers um, and they had Danny green 
guard Porzingis instead of Anthony Davis, uh, thus allowing Anthony Davis to stay in the paint and clogging it up for Luca and Bob Volgaris quote, we're fucked. We're done. <laughs> That's in, we, we can't do shit because they tried to post him up a couple times. It wasn't really working, et cetera. And he was like, basically specifically your post-ups are not efficient. Um, and so there was like some guys he worked with, uh, Zanis Piners, I'm going to get the names butchered, but again, go read the article, um, talked about, you know, working on his post-up game, the efficiency, all the stuff. And now obviously he's in Boston now, uh, and they are posting him up all the time. Um, as they should be learned, learned it in Washington. Um, and, and he's been a lot more open to the idea. I'll read this. While others accepted his limitations as lasting, Porzingis banked on the idea that he could break out of them. Though much of the league was pivoting away from post-ups, he had an unusual advantage as a seven foot two sharpshooter after falling, uh, excuse me, failing to buy fully into the analytics during his time in Dallas quote, because I didn't understand it. He says chats with Piners helped him see their importance at first. This is a quote from Porzingis. Now, at first, I was like, get out of here. He said, I don't know. You're not efficient. You need to do this. You need to do that. So once we got comfortable having those conversations, that's when he really helped me. Now, as you can see with Porzingis now, man, loves the post up. So Zoom shout out to J King for a very, very well-written article. Again, it's titled uh, Christoph's Porzingis career was at a crossroads. Then he learned to trust the numbers. It's on The Athletic right now. So everyone should go read it. But Christoph's post ups have quickly become a favorite in Boston. So W. I've been begging for more post-ups, especially in the clutch. I think it's just such a controlled play that they can run. They can draw doubles just by getting him the ball. He doesn't even have to put it on the floor if he doesn't want to. He can just turn and shoot over guys. The options seem very, very limitless when it comes to that, rather than the the pigeonholes that they put themselves in with other kind of things. Like the Tatum ISOs are great, but they're not, and – he often just takes a tough shot and there isn't always a pass that comes out of it. Um, it's just too single layered. So by throwing something in where Porzingis can turn and shoot, he can pass, he can drive and try and dunk. There's just so many more things you can get out of it than just the lame same thing. Yeah. Shout out, shout out Porzingis. I never... <laughs> It always astonishes me how easily you wrap everything into, yeah, fuck this guy, Jason Tatum. <laughs> it's just, well, it's just like the alternative. Like, if you're talking about the late game stuff, that's usually what they run. And, I mean, this season it hasn't gone very well. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think they do need to run more. That wasn't stuff, even meant stuff. to be, I like, think, a slight I, at him. It's just, like, this is why, I like, I think this is better. It just it just tickles me. It makes me laugh. But, um, but Tillman do does have more should. game winners than Tatum. Yes, but he's more than Porzingis too. So that's a, well. That's because Porzingis doesn't get the fucking shot. <laughs> Actually, I think Porzingis technically does have a game winner. He had one in Memphis, but it was like with a minute to play, and they just got a billion stops in between. That doesn't count. That doesn't fucking count. <laughs> and, he had the game saving no. block. Well, then if that counts, in then that Tatum's game. Timberwolves game counts. Yeah, it was a fire performance from Tatum. Mm-hmm. Timberwolves game was awesome. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's go to the email. Uh, nobody oh, commented yeah. what's popping on this video, so nobody gets a ten dollar gift card. Um, but yeah, reminder: comment what's popping for a chance to win a ten dollar in pop needle gift card. Let's check out the email. RJ sent us a couple, so let's go see what he had to say. First one from RJ: What's popping, Edie and Kata? Evening, guys. Halftime of the men's title game is time for a couple of oh, quick hits. Sorry, that's time. when he sent this. <clears throat> Tough, RJ. Congrats to Nimi for his multi-year deal. I think his minutes and physicality will be useful in the playoffs at the C's draw and bead. No, he's not going to be a quote Embiid stopper, but he's going to help wear him down. Zach Eady's performance tonight should move him up in the draft uh, to where the C's won't see him at the end of the first round or the top of the second. I know a lot of people will say he's Luke Cornett 2.0, but I think he's going to continue to develop his game. Uh, he spends uh, year one in the G League to get reps that will develop his skills he will need for going to be a career. Finally, with the Cata contract, what will Brad do this summer with the roster? I don't see the Celtics carrying five centers and Brissy. Who goes? I'm almost certain Svee won't be back in Boston next year. My initial wild ass guess is that the Celtics, uh, the C's help out Luke with the sign and trade, possibly finding someone who wants a package of Luke Brissett and Davison to help fill out the roster inexpensively before you scoff. Consider the upside. Ben and Stevens have shown elsewhere after a partial year in Celtics University. Anyways, back to the second half. Go Boilers. Sorry, RJ. That, Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> didn't end for you. Um, now, not I, I'm not even going to call it at the risk. At the expense of knowing I'm going to get yelled at by the comments again, Nimi's not going to play in the playoffs. I'm sorry. He's, he's just not He's not, He's not. not going to play in the playoffs. Well, and he if might, he does, he might he does, just foul Embiid minutes. 
I know. <laughs> I don't think he's going to play in the playoffs. I don't think he'll even get that. Because you're telling me he's going to get foul and bead minutes over Cornette and Tillman and Al Horford and Chris Dupstringas. I don't buy it. I just, it's they might just, just not use it as a, so those other guys don't get fouls. <laughs> I, it could I happen. Don't it. I don't know. I think there's. I don't a, think he's going to play a lot of minutes. I think there's a. 0.5% chance Nimi steps foot on the court. I also hope they win games by enough that he will play. Sure. Garbage time minutes. Yes. But I, I, if you see him before the fourth quarter, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Some, no, it, something's it's just, wrong. If you're seeing no. him in the third quarter, it's not going to happen. He's not going to minutes. And it does make it awkward with the centers thing. I think I could see a world where they carry all of them into next year, but that is a lot. Now that you say it out loud, but at the same time, like, have them all on the roster right now. Like, I think they are comfortable with the roster they have now. And so I could easily see them carrying it into next season as well. I I don't know the details of Nimi's contract for all we know. Next year is a non-guaranteed year. Um, we don't know that at all. Um, I do think there's a chance Luke gets paid too much. So maybe this is a Luke insurance, but I got very uh, much yelled at in the comments for saying there was one comment that I want to read that I was like, do you, uh, let me just read this <clears throat> one commenter got mad at me and said, I'm um, talking about Cornette as if he's Tim Duncan or someone is crazy talking about Kata. Whenever played Cornette is crazy in the little time Kata has played, he's done more than Cornette big time wrong. So. <laughs> You're just not correct. Like you Cornette's just see what really you want to see. Gets minutes this year. <laughs> Cornette's been amazing this year. And I'm not talking about Cornette. Like I'm Tim Duncan. I'm just saying, I think he's better than Namish Kata. So if you're saying Namish Kata is like, what? Like, <laughs> an all-star and Tim Duncan's an MVP. Like, I think you're the crazy one for thinking that they're on that level. Like, I'm not saying he's Tim Duncan. I just don't think Nimi is better than him. And that's fine. Nimi's a good player too, but I just think Clarinet's has been really good. Yeah, I think uh, the Celtics are going to have some decisions to make this summer, and it's going to suck. I think they have a lot of likable players on this team. I think they have a lot of guys that get along with each other, and the thought of Luke Cornett leaving kind of sucks because he's not only a really – solid backup piece but he also seems to be a good presence within the team so i don't think they'll let him go I, uh, I don't, I can't see it, it just depends how much someone wants to pay him i also don't think they'll let him go nor should they should they let i him think go because i think he gets not gonna stolen on yeah i think he could get stolen but like rj saying well, like they could trade mean. him i don't think they'll trade him i don't think they'll let him go for nothing i think it's either someone's gonna pay him too much where they don't want to <clears throat> match it um or he's going to be on the team and I think it'll be well worth it. Cause Cornette's been awesome. Frankly, he's been really, really, really good this year for the Celtics. Um, yeah. So. And it helps that he doesn't make any money. So if he starts making money and doesn't play as well, then it'll kind of suck. Exactly. Exactly. That's the problem. Anyways. <clears throat> thank you, RJ. Um, is there anything else we missed in here? Sorry about yeah, the other guys. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry about the players. Svi. Svi was a weird addition because he kind of joined with the, backup plan of going to play in Europe. And yeah. he might still kind of want to do that because he didn't really play with this year's well, Celtics team. But when he's actually taking shots, they usually go in. My thing with Svi is as much as everyone thinks it could be Drew Peterson, like you want to talk about a if Hauser gets paid replacement. That's one of the guys you work Svi. with. It's one of the guys you work with. And everyone's like, oh, but Svi's so much older. Drew Peterson's not young. Like, let's let's not, like, people, I don't think people realize how old. Um, how old is he? Drew Peterson is. He's 24. Um, Svi, and Svi is, I think, 26. Uh, yeah, he's 26. So, like, not that much difference in age. So, I don't know. I, I like Svi. And the other thing is, I don't know where I saw this or heard it, but I'm pretty sure, or I think I saw somewhere that Svi is friends with Tatum. So we mm. might, he might get the bump. <laughs> he might, he might be here forever. Yeah. He might get the bump. He might uh, then again. Coach. Uh, then again, Grant was also friends with Tatum. So <clears throat> never mind. No, um, they, they hate Grant. Next thing. Uh, what's popping more sandwich love. Sweet. Right. Uh, morning guys. Nice wrap ups on the Nimi signing in the Tuesday morning drop since this last week has zero meeting for the Celtics in March. Madness uh, is officially over. Let me return to my own stroll down the food memory lane. McDonald's sausage biscuit. I forget when Mickey D added this to the breakfast menu, but I was hooked from the start. Like their fries. You got to eat it warm from the grill. Otherwise, the biscuit dries out and it's nowhere near as awesome. The sausage patty is perfectly spiced and doesn't need uh, egg or cheese. I could eat these every day for a while. I think I did. McDonald's mm. breakfast sandwiches are very good. I had one today. Yeah, I remember <laughs> they used to have chicken McGriddles. Fire. Mm. Just pure class. Pure class. Yeah, you get yourself the, the little pancake breading. 
And then you get a chicken patty too, and a hash brown on the side. Change your life. Mm, next one, Euro sandwich. First, just pronounce Euros. Is it Euros? I think it's Euros. Euros. I thought it was Euros. It's like Hero. anyways. It's, it's like uh, Tyler Hero. I always said Euros. Uh, the original sandwich shop meat. Uh, is a blend of seasoned lamb and beef that is slow cooked on a vertical skewer, then thinly sliced and thinly grilled before being tucked into a pita bread that also has been lightly warmed on the griddle. Traditional is to add shredded lettuce, diced tomato, white onion, and tzatziki, a very yummy yogurt and cucumber sauce, and then wrap it in either foil or paper to eat on the go. You can get it as dinner plate at some places, but sandwich is the best. If it doesn't seem a little greasy slash oily, not too much, then they didn't make it right. A staple in the Chicagoland area that many people have tried to redo is a sandwich wrap. The way Sam is about home white uniforms uh, only being worn at home. That's me opposing a, quote, healthy sandwich wrap version of this uh, of a euro. Um, a healthy euro is fundamentally wrong. Buy it and bad things will happen to you. <laughs> I've never had one. Have you? Uh, they. I've never had a hero sandwich. I, I think they have falafel wraps and you can get like chicken and stuff in it. it East Side Pockets in Providence. But besides that, I don't really think I've had much mediterranean type mm-hmm. food mm-hmm. and i know heroes are a staple of that i'm pretty sure hero is a different sandwich like a hero sandwich is a thing it's spelled like, the way that is spelled i know but like there is a hero sandwich like h-e-r-o is a real no sandwich. that's not what i'm talking about okay i feel like i don't know <clears throat> i don't care let us know in the comments you guys can say stuff ganella buns T- uh, time to take a quick break to acknowledge why i never bought a store so su- uh, why Why I never bought a store-bought store bought sub, sub until I was in my 30s. Canela buns. Growing up around Chicago, their six-inch bread branch, uh, French bread rolls were the foundation of any sub style sandwich made in the area. They had amazing texture, flavor, and consistency. Hot or cold sandwiches built on these were amazing. Uh, and that meant I could make several sandwich subs with these uh, pack, uh, a pack of cold cuts, uh, condiments, and cheese for the price of one from the corner deli, let alone a chain. Uh, be well, RJ, who says... Uh, who only writes food posts after eating. I've never had Ganella buns, have you? Me neither. i never even heard of them. <coughs> Let's take a I look. I did have Jersey Mike's yesterday. What Ganella a buns. I don't see them. I just see Ganella hot dog buns, but I don't think that's what you're... Oh, here. No, I, don't I, assume, so. I assume it's this. Um, like, soft rolls. Oh, okay. Yeah, I bet that's pretty good, especially for a homemade sandwich. It's, you can't really go wrong with that. There you go. W. <clears throat> Thank you, RJ, as per usual. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Let's get into the NBA standings check-in, which, as per usual, is going to be pretty fun because we're getting down to that Hell time of the yes. season where the NBA standing section is quickly befo- becoming excuse me, our favorite part of the show. Here we go. <clears throat> so, uh, as of now, the Celtics still have a big – Celtics did lose to the Bucks though, so their lead has gone from 15 to 14, unfortunately. Uh, everyone Bums. can cry. Um, <clears throat> but – the Bucks are a game up on the Knicks, uh, and the Knicks are only a game up on the Magic and the Cavs, and the Knicks are only a game and a half up on the Pacers. Uh, that makes up two through six. Philly is only a game behind Indiana in the six seven, uh, and then Miami is a game and a half out of seventh place in two and a half games out of six. Miami is looking like they're going to be in the play in tournament. Uh, their their time for a run has well, Miami ended. plays today, and they have a game in hand on both Philly and Indiana. So if they win tonight, they will be tied with Philly. They are playing Dallas. It's not Orlando impossible. Plays Milwaukee. It's not impossible, but they would have to win out, and the Pacers would have to lose out. Not they're impossible. Too, not impossible, but highly unlikely. Very unlikely. Um, <clears throat> looks like they'll be in the plan. Uh, but the Sixers could still jump in uh, to the playoffs and out of the play-in uh, should the Pacers lose. I don't know. I mean, the Sixers have won six in a row. The Pacers have just won three in a row themselves. I don't know. Have the um, – do they play each other? I wonder. Uh, they did I just play each other. Uh, Pacers do not have any more games against Philly. No, they don't. The Pacers only have two games left. So, actually, I'm pretty sure the Heat cannot climb out of the – They right? sure could. Oh, it's – sorry. Wait. Yeah, I'm reading a game and a half. I'm thinking two and a half. Game and a half. They would have to win out. Yes. Indiana. My bad. My bad. Um, Uh, Orlando also could fall out for what it's worth. Yeah. So could I guess Cleveland could too. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, there's some wiggle room. The Knicks could fall out, technically. 
I would love if the Knicks fell out and got bounced the first round. <laughs> That's a Fuck very, very Knicks. unlikely, but they are they could technically fall out. But yeah. Uh meanwhile, uh, oh also the Bulls, Hawks, who cares? Rest of these, who cares? Um <laughs> It just doesn't matter. Out West, uh, everyone's clinched the playoffs. Timberwolves, Nuggets, Thunder, Clippers, Mavs have all clinched um, the playoffs at the very least. Um, The Pelicans are fighting with the Suns. Uh, They're one game up on the Suns in sixth place. Um, The Timberwolves, Nuggets, and Thunder are still fighting for the first seed. Thunder are one game back of the other two. Uh, The Kings and the Lakers are scrapping it out to see. That's actually an important race because whoever wins out and gets the eighth seed will only have to win one game versus Mm -hmm. two. Um, So that's actually very important. And then the Warriors Warriors are also actually only a game out of the eighth seed. So they could also find a way up into that 7-8 game. That would be huge. So this 6 through 10 race in the West is is the equivalent of the uh, 3 through I guess eight race in the East. It's, it's coming down the wire here. We're going to have some very fun games this Sunday uh, on the last day of the season. It's going to be electric. You have uh, a semi fun slate tonight. I already talked about um, magic bucks, heat Mavericks. Who else we got? Who else we got? I'm looking ESPN decided to take me off the games page. So you're going to have to give me a moment. You have Cleveland <laughs> I got is you. playing Memphis. Atlanta yep. is playing Charlotte, which means nothing. Toronto, Toronto, Brooklyn is meaningless. Uh, Dallas, Miami, Orlando, Milwaukee. Spurs Orlando, Milwaukee is huge. Minnesota plays Denver. And Phoenix plays the Clippers. The Clippers are not playing anymore. Mm. So if the Magic beat the Bucks, that means they'll be tied in terms of standing. No. They'll be Magic will only be one game back of the Bucks if they win. Correct. If the Heat beat the Mavericks, they will jump into a tie They'll with tie the Sixers. Philly. Yep. yep. Minnesota Denver is a huge game because that will have sole possession and a one game lead atop the Western Conference. Phoenix Clippers is important for Phoenix because they're in that race as well. So a lot of stuff going down here. And then I I mean, if Cleveland loses to Memphis, then that would be it. fire. That would you be deserve, so fire. <laughs> you deserve what's coming. Then then you get interesting. <laughs> they've already made it interesting by just blowing everything up um but anyways let's uh yeah we can we can wrap the NBA standings there unless you have anything else no nah, i i'm excited to watch these games play out i'll tell you that it'll be a fun time uh next thing Giannis got hurt live in front of our eyes on the playback um mm-hmm. He avoided significant injury to the Achilles which is good good for Giannis um the reporting is uh, that he will miss some time with a calf strain, uh, maybe a bit slow in the first round, um, but effectively that they're just going to be playing it by ear at this point. Excuse me, point. But I did see some people on Twitter. I don't know if they were. I think they were like medical people saying like these injuries usually take around one to two weeks to be fully like fully back to normal. Yep, he's done for the regular season. That is for sure. He will not they play any more regular season games. Underdog fantasy had that today, and the playoffs is questionable. I don't know when exactly he'll be back. But we talked a little bit about this on the old talking seas today, Jack. But you are not convinced Milwaukee gets out of the first round regardless. Never mind if yeah. Giannis is grabbing the calf like he's me. Yeah, I think they're cooked. I think they're they're screwed. I, I, I thought they were screwed before Giannis got hurt. I think because they're gonna lose to whoever they play. They now they really need to hope that Philly or Miami climbs out of the play. And I'm I'm hoping for it as is just because I don't want to get stuck playing with. But, I mean, they're guaranteed to play one of them. The Celtics technically could avoid playing either one, regardless if the season ended today and it was 7, 8, 9, 10 the way it is. One of those teams could lose both games and not play the Celtics. One of them is going to have to win to, to get the seventh seed. So Milwaukee will have their hands full regardless. It would be crazy if the Bulls or the Hawks did like win two games in a row, which is not impossible, and like just got into the playoffs over one of these the fucking electric. other teams. Uh, that'd be fun, but uh, yeah, man, I I think like I think Milwaukee's just not very good, <laughs> and I know this is like bad timing because they did just beat the Celtics, but like in a seven game uh, series with the way they've played this season, like I think the Knicks would beat them, I think the Sixers would beat them, I think the Heat would beat them, and I think the Magic, Cavs, and Pacers, maybe the Magic and Pacers uh, would have like a real like fifty fifty chance. I don't think the Cavs are very good um, against the Bucks, and I just I don't know, I just don't believe in the Bucks, man. I, I'm I'm not I'm I'm out. I don't. I don't well, see the best, it. The probably most fun 
Bucks matchup out of the plane would be Miami because you have the whole <laughs> one team really, really wanted Dame and it was their whole life and the other team actually got Dame. So you have a bunch of guys on Miami that were told they should be traded for Dame all summer with the opportunity to eliminate Dame and the boys from the playoffs. I think that'd be pretty fun for the players and the fan base has had enough of not having Dame on their team. So they also would like to eliminate I, him. Of course, Philly would be fun. I want Indy. Oh, yeah, Indy's a fun rivalry part, but the the juice behind the Dame stuff would be fun. It would be. I just, I think they're done. I just think they're cooked, man. I don't know. I'm I'm out on on Milwaukee. I'm not not a believer. Uh, So I I, I just don't think they'll be very good. I hope Giannis is okay, though, genuinely. I, I, you know, I hate injuries. Injuries suck, man. Uh, All right. Next thing the Suns have signed Isaiah Thomas for the rest of the regular season. The former Celtic gets his chance to play. Uh, for the rest of the year, um, he's playoff eligible, I believe, because he wasn't on another team, got bought out. He's just a free agent. So, yeah, good for IT. W. w. Still think it's convenient that the Nimi news came a half hour after the Isaiah thing came out from Shane. It is. Maybe, maybe Brad and the boys were clutching their pearls, holding out. Like, can we please, please get Isaiah back? We need it because we fucked him over really bad and we're cursed now. <laughs> It is interesting timing. I'll I'll give you that. No, it is intriguing timing. The other thing Mm. is, we didn't even talk about this, and this is less Isaiah Thomas and more Nimi, but Celtics have a two-way spot open now. I'm ready if needed. New video soon. I don't give a (laughs) fuck about the two ways, but I know we're going to have to fill time next week. But telling you right now, if that video comes out and you hear me talking... Just know I don't give a fuck about whoever I'm talking about. <laughs> unless it's Kevin unless, Reed, unless, yeah, unless it's somebody we like. No. Unless it's somebody we think is cool. Like who I, would be the I, fun I, most fun? This should have been a segment in the Celtics section. Who would be I don't even know if you can think of any the most fun two way player the Celtics could possibly sign? Are there even a name that pops into your head? David like, Duke, I, the the PC guy? Not, sure. not the other guy i was gonna say that's quite the name to come out of your mouth no, no. Um, yeah he played a pc it would be cool i'd be in for that um what about uh who's the guy you played in main this year dj what stewart no 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 the the other pc guy pc what's guy? his name played maybe maybe you're talking about justin Manaya? no 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 the guy you don't like <laughs> I should find out fucking oh uh, aj name. reeves yeah no, I don't think he's playing in Maine anymore. He's not very he, good. He was, though. He was, though, is my point. He was um, with Maine for a little bit, but he's not very good. He's J.R. Smith, but, like, not Walmart, like, Dollar Tree. <laughs> I've heard high praise for Kyler uh, Kyler Kelly, but I don't think he – I don't think they need another big guy. So I don't know how that would make much sense. Uh, I'm pretty sure David Duke's already signed, actually, so I don't think he – He can. is. He's, he's with, like, another team, but what if they were like, hey, come play for us instead? Well, he's in a two way. Like he's not. <laughs> um, but Jarrett Culver signing a two way with the Celtics. How about that? What do you think? I just don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, if I had a pool of all the two way guys in front of me, I, I need, know. I, I have nothing this. either. I just saw Jarrett Culver here and thought it was funny because, like, holy shit, what a name. I haven't thought of Jarrett Culver in so long. Is Book Night available? <laughs> Bring in I know Jermaine Charlotte Samuels. got rid of him. Uh, he's in a two-way contract. Damn. Jermaine Samuels is from like a town away from me. Never mind. Anyways, okay, that's it. We can be done. Uh, next thing, funny. Malik Monk extension talk. So Malik Monk is going to need a new contract at the end of this year. Uh, and usually this isn't something we talk about, but I just thought Sabonis' response to this, I just thought was entertaining because it was like, uh, it's, it's, it's what's the Bernie Sanders meme? I'm no longer asking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he was asked about it. And Sabonis goes, we better keep him. <laughs> I think there's no excuse. I'll talk to Monty McNair and Vivek, <laughs> and, uh, Vivek myself. We've got to keep him. He's a big plus, uh, piece for us moving forward. Um, Mike Brown said, it's just easy to see how important Malik is to our organization. He's loved by his teammates, the organization in the city. Hopefully his free agency won't last too long. It'll be a king long term. Uh, Malik Monk said, I'm comfortable in Sacramento. I'd love to play here again for sure. I've been here the last two years and made friends with everyone, including the training staff in the front office. I'd love to be back here. But just the initial from I want to hang out with my friends. <laughs> yeah, the initial one from Sabonis of we better keep him is like, it's just Sabonis like. Sabonis hit him with the not my money. Literally, That's what he I'm did. not asking Respect. you, you motherfuckers. Bring him back. Yeah, I, I mean, that- it's good that these guys are willing to go to bat for Malik Monk. Malik Monk, in part of it is he's coming off an injury, so they probably don't want to see him get fucked in that respect either. Yeah. He's played really well for Sacramento. He was good for them yeah. last season. He was good in the postseason in the first round. 
And then this year, he was a six man of the year candidate. Of course, you want to keep that guy probably around as win. you're trying to compete with your team. He's probably going to win six man of the year. He's yeah. averaged fi- 15, three, and five assists off the bench and 44, 35 splits. Like, he's been a really, really, really important piece uh, for them. So, shout out Malik Monk. He, he should definitely get paid. The question is how much? And not my, not my money, not my pro. Yep. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But when Demontis Sabonis is going to make 51 mil in a few years, then you should probably get a uh, get thinking. <laughs> Almost choked in my damn water. <laughs> That's I will say he was playing Sabonis that much, much kind of money. I will say Fox is on actually a really good deal. He makes 32 this year, 34 next year, and 37 the year after that. Like that's actually not really bad at all. No, it's a good deal. Player. Uh, but then he's going to get the bag. So get ready, Sacramento. Good luck. Uh, anyways, next uh, and final NBA thing. I've been looking forward to this. So I love how obvious this is a copy paste. Not that I blame you for the amount of content that is in this section, but just <laughs> I'm going to read the first sentence of what Jack posted. <laughs> on a night when electric Knicks guard Jalen Brunson poured in 45 points on 13 for 24 <laughs> shooting, the Bulls defense couldn't afford such careless blunders from their offense. Listen, now, did you man. write this yourself? Of course not. I didn't write well, this. Well, no, no, no. Oh, but oh, I thought you oh, might have no. did this in a Bulls article. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I just pulled this from Hoops Hype. It's because the gotcha. quote's attached. Uh, and um, let me let me, let me me pull up the clip Set before the we... Uh, <laughs> So the Knicks played the Bulls last night. Uh, the Knicks were up uh, at the start of the – or at the, by the end of the first quarter, the Knicks were, like, up by 10 or 9-ish. And mm. <laughs> Tory second quarter opens. Uh, first play of the quarter, Bulls get a tur- – Bulls force a turnover. Play good defense. Uh, play good defense. Get a steal. Get, get a turnover. Tory Craig gets the ball. And I'm going to play it for the YouTube crowd here. Tori, uh, I'm going to play the audio just because we need it. So just, just right. take a listen. Starts the second of the bench. Russian Bogdanovich has never stopped moving. That's a steal for Drummond. Andre Drummond knocked it free. And Tori Craig! Oh, no! <laughs> Chris Broussard has entered the chat. <laughs> so, well, actually, Tori Craig. Mm. Play it back. And you can take the sound off. We don't need the sound again. So Tory Craig gets the ball in the fast break after Drummond gets the steal. Drummond is the, the one that gets the steal, is right. He is. He has Torrey earned Craig, this bucket. Tory Craig throws it off the backboard. Um and supposedly to himself, but Drummond thinks he's throwing it to him. So they both jump. Andre Drummond bodies Tory Craig. They both fall down, and neither of them makes the bucket. Uh it's just look at look at Kobe White's face. Kobe White's just watching this all go down. He just goes like the the, the audible equivalent of what was said here is probably like, "Are you fucking kidding me, man?" Like, watch him. He just goes, "Oh man, <laughs> dude, the disappointment." Um, after the this game, this team gets Tor- to play in the postseason. By the way, <clears throat> they do. After the uh, after the game, Tory Craig said, "Quote: I just wanted to try to create some excitement." Uh, he said. Uh, we did some really dumb stuff tonight. This is from Kobe White now. We did some really dumb stuff tonight. Everybody, not just T. Craig. So we're not going to sit here and single him out. We're a team. Um, Billy Donovan uh, also said, uh, he said something about it. I'm going to find it. But uh, Tory Craig said, we've been dealing with it all season. And I take accountability with that as well. Sometimes we let our emotions get the best of us. But it's an emotional game, uh, especially when you want to win, especially when you're competitive. We've just got to do a better job of the team, not letting it cost us games. Uh, it's too late. Kobe White then said it's too late in the season to be having these types of lapses. So we've got to get our shit together. Um, yeah, the for sure. Uh, and then what was it? Bulls next game recap. I, Billy Donovan's quote about this was super funny as well because he was just like clearly really pissed. Uh, I think goes... the best part is Tory Craig. So just like imagine being in the play, right? Tory Craig is ahead of the pack. He throws the ball off the glass and jumps. <laughs> If you're Andre Drummond, though you may already have made the decision to jump and you may be in the air, you can still make the decision not to reach for the ball. Yep. He's like, fuck this. It's mine. And he tries to rip (laughs) the ball away from Torrey Craig. And then they get nothing. And like you pointed out, Kobe White's standing there very displeased after making a gut-busting run up the other lane to try and get in on the play in case they wanted to make a pass. And that's what they ended up with. Very tough for the Bulls. Very tough. What did Billy Donovan have to say? Just one line said, to me, it was just really disappointing. <laughs> just, just hit him with the disappointed father figure, disappointed mom. Like, 
Speaking of I'm PC, not mad. I'm just disappointed. Billy Donovan uh, PC. Yeah, it's tough, dude. That's well, the way they were talking about it after the game, they were like, it's not just T. Craig. Are we, was that Tory Craig's fault? Are we sure that was Tory no. Craig's fault? Yeah, <laughs> what are we doing? I think Tory Craig, hot take, had it. I think he would have made it. He definitely had it. Yeah. He would have definitely made it. What was Andre Drummond doing is the thing. Like, why is he not getting somebody, any shit for it? Somebody said in the chat, greatest rebounder of all time. His I said that. Yeah, you said it. I yeah. said that. Yeah, dude. He saw a fucking rebound. He's like, I need it. I need it bad. I got to pad the stats. He was probably devastated when he found it didn't hit the rim. Man, very tough. Uh, all right. Let's go to the rat list here. Would you like to start us off here? Uh, yeah, rat list to whoever keeps making bomb threats at Planet Fitness. Every single day, my buddy Matt, who still works in news, will text a group chat I'm in and be like, bomb threat at Planet Fitness of Warwick again. Like, just, they, they just love a bomb threat. Somebody's calling him every single day being like, bomb threat. One day, they're just going to, like, actually do it. And, like, they'll have cried wolf so many times, no one's going to care. <laughs> It's actually a good the plan. We have the Riddler on. Oh no, no, the not a good plan. Don't do this. We, Allegedly, like, Sam's gonna get docs. No, no, I like the gym. Why would I want them to get rid of it? I'd be heated if somebody blew my gym up, and yeah. if anybody got hurt. Yeah, they. That, I'm glad for the addendum. They, I'm really happy you added that second part. That's clearly yeah. I mean, you, gotta, you, you don't want anyone to get hurt, but I'd like to be able to work out. <laughs> Fucking work. Very inconsiderate. <laughs> I mean, imagine if I if I went to the gym at this time of day, how aggravated I would be. Every single day, I'm trying to. Imagine you're trying to get started in the gym, like you're trying to get in a routine. You're, you're like, I'm gonna get myself in shape, anybody, and you, you just get a bomb threat every time you try and go in there. It's like, I guess it's just not meant to be. I'm not, not getting happening. in shape. Oh, nope. Someone's just calling them. Like, is your refrigerator running? Because there's a bomb in it. <laughs> every single day, and they get a kick out of it every single time. Have they? Have they tried to like find the guy? I'd imagine they do. Like, it's getting to the news every day. They're reporting it to the news. I don't know what goes into phone tracing. I don't know. I know you can get a VPN. I know there's a ton of things you can do to, like, make your location not what it actually is. So the answer, I would say, in short, is they haven't got them yet. Yep. Really yeah. Going on uh, all yeah, good one. Um, this is small and useless thing, but Alice Duncan Donuts... I've said this a million times in the show. <clears throat> My mom gets her coffee, seven milk, seven sugar, which is obscene. It just is, right? It's crazy. Mm. Um, yes, it is. It's now, can you repeat that to me? What did I just say? How did she get it? Seven milk, seven sugar. One more time. Seven milk, seven sugar. Does milk mean cream, Sam? No. Every fucking time. Cream. And, and. My mom doesn't drink it because she can't have it because she had like heart surgery a couple years ago. She, so she can't have, have like that it? much cream. So it just goes to waste because I don't want that fucking coffee. I want my own because I order my it own. It would be funny if and... you like started drinking it and then you got really unhealthy <laughs> because you were, you were like, I have to take I have to fall on the sword here. But like seven and seven is when you say that like seven is like default is, is cream because I don't think what people get like cream and sugar. And so if you say regular, it's cream and sugar. And so when you say seven milk, seven sugar people are just like like apparently people talking and just go oh seven seven easy i'll just put cream in it that's not what i fucking ordered like what do we do like yesterday i ordered mine and hers and there was cream in both of them and i ordered cream for neither of them and listen i don't know about you the last time i had cream it's a what would fantastic you, item what would you do if that happened and they gave you the cream what the fuck do they call it um you go to the drive through and you say um is it return to sender and you just whip it back into the window? <laughs> There's no, something okay. they say. I forget what they, they return say. Return to sender, I think it's something like that. Is it? Is that Gen what it genuinely, is? Genuinely, what would you do? I'd be pissed. I'd probably go to another one. That's what you do. So I or go, I'd go in. One. Now, sure. now, Jack, are you are you going to the drive-thru and telling them or are you putting it in the, the app? I'm going to the drive-thru and telling them. Wow. That's a step up. You're taking it seriously. Well, I, was, I was on the way back from jury duty. Um, but they got it wrong, so I just had to go to another one. But the worst was, and this only happened once, one time I went to the first one, they got it wrong. I went to the second one, they got it wrong. I went to the third one, and they also got it wrong. And so then I had to go back around at the first one and say, hey, can I get another coffee? Like, this is wrong. And they, like, apologize or whatever. But, like, I have fucking five coffees Wait, so you went car. back to the first one? 
No, I went back to the like the last one I went to. That the third. Oh, one okay. I, just got, I was oh, like, I, I was like, you went to another one, and then when they couldn't figure it out, you didn't feel as bad. You were like, oh, maybe it's not just <laughs> well, the one that see, I went to. They won't feel may- bad. Maybe this is a generation. You want to mom- single them out. My mom will like just tell them at the window said, "Oh, I ordered milk," which is like the normal thing to do. But I'm just like, I'm embarrassed. I don't, don't want to like make mm-hmm. their day any harder. I'll just make my day five minutes longer because I don't care that much. I'll just go to another one. whatever. You know what I'm saying? You, you understand what I'm saying? Like you just said, you'd go to another one too. But um, yeah, I probably would. I yeah. Well, I also don't know if I would be able to tell if it was milk or cream. That's the thing. I've learned <laughs> it's just a lot lighter like you can see the color versus the color of milk because it's a lot okay like lighter um because it's thicker and so it like they even put coffee in it um which is a milkshake at that point but one time my mom went up and she said oh i ordered milk not cream and they go that is milk and she's like it's it's clearly not fucking milk like i i know it like and they're like no it's milk i just made it and so my mom took (laughs) the coffee took the lid off drank it put the lid back on and said it's not milk it came back to them and they got really mad <laughs> and i wasn't in the car for it when she came back and told me she goes i got an argument with the drive to work girl and i just go why <laughs> like why did you get in an argument well, oh it's the, not her fault at all is, first, to clarify but is i think it has become like the normal to do what you do and just like say <laughs> yes forget it. And when, I mean, realistically, when you hear it, it's like, no, you're paying. They're getting exactly. Paid, yes. And you yes, should yes. get what you ordered. But I don't think any of us like have like the, the built in like signal to do that anymore. Like we're kind of programmed not to do that. And so yeah. the worker she getting is, told to remake it is a not normal thing for them. I know. And and my, to be clear, my mom is perfectly in the right. Like she she has the right. Correct. Actually, that's not what I ordered. It's just. It's just funny because they were like, no, it's not. It's milk. And she's like, no, it's fucking not, you idiot. <laughs> like, hello? Uh, so, Rattless Duncan for making me go to a second one tomorrow after I spent the whole J. Jerry Um, I'll say, I'll say Rattless Curb. First of all, Curb is coming to a close. I love Curb. I have not finished Curb yet. I have two episodes left. My mom is also a fan of Curb. I was talking to my mom about Curb today. The Rattless is because... I feel like Curb validates my mom a bit. Now, last time I spoke to you and I talked a little bit about the ice rink, which is hilarious. She's like, I think I think we got to go to the council meeting and be like, these kids are going to get their grades off if they're going to annoy me at the ice rink. And I respect that. But my mom does love to, like, you talking about your mom, like, sending the coffee bag made me think, like, my mom loves that stuff. She lives for that stuff. And in the show, Larry does all that that's what larry's character is and so she's like you know i think i like the show so much because i feel validated i was like no 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 we can't have that uh but uh i did want to give a shout out to curb because curb is excellent a work of art did it win our bracket last year sorry it was that in seinfeld i i really just powered i think curb won i think might have won i think you gave to it curb is spectacular um ratless sidebar so do you know what a sidebar is <clears throat> yeah it's the lawyer thing isn't it <laughs> so sidebar is a lawyer says something and the judge go judge goes i'll see you at sidebar because they have to discuss it with just the lawyers <clears throat> now sam have you ever had, you haven't had jury duty right mm, i have not so i was assigned to this court case and I get in at 10 a.m. They don't, or excuse me, I get in at 8 30, my first day there. And they don't let us into the courtroom uh, to pick the jury until 11 15, 11 30. Um, and the lawyer or the judge, first of all, said, I'll try to let you know by 10. Then we just didn't fucking hear from them for an hour and a half. We get in there and I'm number four. So I'm fucked already because the way they do it is like they'll pick the jury. And if they pick it before your number's called, you just get to go home. So I was four. So I'm cooked. I'm done. Right. <clears throat> so put us up there. Stick us on the jury. Um, And as they're talking, though, they bring all the jurors, potential jurors, up one by one, while the rest of them just sit there in the back of the courtroom. You can't use your phones. can't nothing. You just got to sit there on your ass. Mm -hmm. Um, But they put the sound on, so you can't hear what's being talked about at the the jurors, uh, at the judge's table. And it's just effectively white noise. Just (laughs) in. 
just in. Uh, did my mic cut that? I don't care to hear me. No, <clears throat> I heard you. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so they put that in. They put that in. They put that in. Until everyone's done. Everyone's done. So I'm hearing that for like maybe an hour, like an hour <clears throat> straight, like yeah, go, ringing cool. throughout the room. They pick the jury. Fine. We get through. We do the whole court case. <clears throat> the lawyer gets up. Talking, talking, talking. Objection. <clears throat> See you at sidebar. Lawyers go up to sidebar. Come back. Objection sustained. Talking, talking, asking questions. Objection. Judge thinks about it because judge can just go sustained or, or uh, overruled and like let it go. And she mm. goes, mm, I'll see you at sidebar. Back up over and over and over again. And at this point, we get lunch at like one before after opening statements. Um, <clears throat> and at this point, there have been so many sidebars that we only get through two witnesses before we, we were just like, uh, so earlier in the day, the judge goes, we're hoping to be done by the, with this in one day and we'll get you out of here. Judge rocks up 345 after we're done with certain things. She goes, earlier today, I did something I didn't usually do and I made you a promise or I, I told you something and I said we'd be done in one day. Unfortunately, with all the stuff we have left, we're not going to be able to get it done in one day. So we'd like to see you back here tomorrow. I hope you all come back 10 a.m. <clears throat> get back the next day. Me and the other jurors, who I've made friends with at this point, they're cool people. Everyone was good people. <clears throat> so shout out to them. Me and this other guy, uh, who is around our age, I think he was like 22. Uh, I turn to him and I go, "Hey, buddy, over under ten and a half sidebars today." <laughs> <And> so <laughs> we, we're just in the jury, and every time they go sidebar, shh, we just look at each other and go, "We just go what?" <laughs> <laughs> so we're just in the fucking jury of like this is a criminal case i'm not gonna talk about exactly what the case was but mm -hmm. i told sam what the case was and it's just, we're just sitting there counting like one <laughs> two three trying not to like laugh at the fucking sidebar noise <laughs> and they only had five sidebars <clears throat> yeah they only had five sidebars that day but just the noise shh, every time like i was like dude Come on. Uh, do you have another one and I can save my last jury day or do you want me to or you don't? I don't really have anything else. I'll just continue. Sadly. Then. So so I go through this whole case. I was there 830 to four uh, the first day. Second day, we show up at 10. I woke up late, too. I woke up at 9.15, so I, like, rushed out the door. I got there late, and they didn't have parking in one lot, so I had to go to the other one and then walk over. But we got there in time. Me and this other kid who I was talking about before, we, like, stood around in this room, like, are they coming? Are we that late? Um, but they eventually came to get us. So we get in, get into the courtroom, right? Get into the courtroom. We got there at 10, got in around, like, 10.30. <clears throat> they start up again. They're going. They're going. Sidebar. Shh. Yeah, I get it. Um, going through everything. Going through everything. We get to like or 10 or like 11 ish. We're at 11, 11, 15. And the judge goes, okay, I'm going to have the jury step out for a moment. We have some legal matters we'd like to discuss that cannot be heard because they would sway your decision. So we're going to have you sit out. We'll get you back in very quickly, very quickly. 11, 15, that happens. Don't get back in the courtroom till 1230, 1245. <clears throat> get in, get in there. Uh, dude, dude, the court marshal or whatever, the court officer, or whatever, comes and he says, "Circle what you want. <clears throat> We're gonna buy you lunch when you come for deliberations." And so I got like an Italian sub. It was good. I got that in Pepsi. It was nice. <clears throat> we get in there. The lawyers do their closing statements. Um, we see the witness, all this good stuff. And then the judge goes. <clears throat> so a reminder: I'd sat in there from Bennett Court, eight thirty to four one day, and then ten to now, like. I didn't get out of court at the end of the day till like three. So this was like 2 p.m. <clears throat> mm. uh, or like maybe 1.30. And I, they go, okay, we're going to pick a name. We're going to whittle the jury down here. And we're like, what do you mean whittle the jury down? What are you talking about? We pick seven in case one of you doesn't show up for the second day or just can't make it the second day. If something happens, we're going to pick one of you be the alternate. And what we're going to do with the alternate is stick them in another room by themselves and not let them help. We're gonna do this in a very scientific way, for, judge says verbatim. <laughs> just goes, mother, motherfucker, just you, <laughs> motherfucker pulls out a cup with papers in it with numbers, and she goes, "Ooh, swirl to me, pick one out, juror number four and seat number two. My dumbass <laughs> got picked to be the alternate juror. So after all of this bullshit that I had to listen to." All of this case that I was like now invested in. Like I wanted to help figure this thing. Like at this point, I wanted to like get, share my opinions. 
They stuck me in another room by myself for an hour and a half while the rest of the jury deliberated. I had to eat my lunch by myself. I had to just sit in there. They just annexed me. I didn't get to see any of the like the, the documents, the evidence and stuff. All I, I Nothing. I didn't get the help at all. And then they pulled me back and they're like, okay, the jury's done now. And they, they sit us back down to the jury, but they go, you were the alternate, right? And I go, yeah, okay, you have to sit over here. I sat by myself, like, to the side. Like, so it was clear that I didn't fucking help or do anything. Like, they had to note that I didn't do they shit. They should have given you a dunce cap. <clears throat> Dude. This guy's luckily, not good enough to make a decision. <laughs> the rest of the jury was like, uh, what would you have said? Like, when we got back in after everything, like, I was like, oh, I would have said this. And they were like, oh, yeah, okay. We, 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 we like thought over, like, what we would Jack so. Because, well, no, yeah, they, they're like, we all agreed with it, but they were like, we were, we were asking ourselves, like, what do you guys think Jack would think? Cause we felt bad. <laughs> they didn't let you do anything. And so they came to the same conclusion I was leaning towards as well. So everything was good. And it was like a nice ending, uh, in my opinion, at least. Cause hopefully they're, yeah, that, uh, to the that's kind of but... terrible. <laughs> Like, not only did you have to do jury duty, but you didn't even get to do jury duty. Like, no, yeah, you had to be there, but you didn't even get to participate in the fun. Like, no. you could have ruined someone's life if you wanted to, but you didn't even get the chance. Yep. Yeah. Literally, I did nothing. I did. I was like, it was the de- if if you want, like, you look up waste of time in yeah. the dictionary. That is exactly what it is. Getting jury duty, getting picked, going through the trial, having to go back for a second day, and then being the alternate it's like that and being a bulls fan <laughs> there yeah. you go there you go yeah so that's that was my uh my experience at jury duty anyways uh any final thoughts sam uh i hope you don't have to do jury i hope i don't have to do jury duty well i'm free for three years all right so they don't, they don't i better to, order I myself that. a confederate flag vest just my, in case. <laughs> my gym teacher who i did it with told me he's been picked seven times and he sat on a jury five different times, including once in federal court, which is like federal court probably kind of lit. <clears throat> it's, Except it probably it's, takes a while, but still probably like kind of cool. It's scary, dude. It, it is like a anxious situation having to listen to this shit. You I, know, you know um, shit. I lost it. Just keep talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had I. Oh, you know what? Nope. I I I had it and I lost it again. This is bad. Keep this in. This is this is not good for me. Of course I'm going to keep it in. Yeah, yeah, keep it uh, in. Anyways. Keep it in. <laughs> we appreciate you all for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the How About Them Celtics, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube channel. Leave a like on the video as I see Sam staring off his screen, like trying desperately to think of what he was talking about. I no um, idea what um, I was make sure... I, It was something funny. I'm pissed. <laughs> make sure uh, to leave a like and subscribe. Comment oh. what's popping and use codes. Hit me. There it is. I knew it was coming. You, I knew it was coming. you know what would have been terrible is to have the draft. <laughs> I saw the draft on like somebody posted a video of the draft on Twitter yeah. like this week. Oh, I saw I you like, tweet this. Yeah. Yeah. Like best time ever to have February 29th be your birthday. <laughs> like I don't even think they would have had February 29th on the sheet. Imagine yeah, it's like you is... and like five people just like pumping your fist so you didn't like get the it. Fucking, it's like the fucking Hunger Games for like February 29th. What the fuck? What do you mean? <laughs> I didn't think they would have that. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, I would be so heated if I got drafted. <laughs> I remember there was like talk that the draft was gonna come back. Yeah. Oh, I was devastated. Yeah, I was this like talk. talking to people. Hell I was no. like, how do I how do I not do this? Because I was any at the time I was working at the nursing home. So I was like uh talking to one of the line cooks who was around for the first time they did the draft. And I was like, What'd you do? Yeah, what do you <laughs> say? Like, Tell he was like he was like, Well, you could like do heroin. Like well, they, I mean, they wouldn't take you if you did heroin. You're fucked because, like, they're not taking my fat ass with glasses. <laughs> you're you're cooked. Buck. Get you later. Shape. It might be good for you. Hell no. They'd rather you're dumbass. You run seven miles a day. You're done. See you later, brother. Goodbye. I just yeah. I start slamming back like <laughs> yeah. dozens of donuts. Well, maybe it could be good. Maybe maybe I've done you up. Well, there, there's a again. season of Always Sunny where Mac, one of the actors that plays Mac, gets fat, and like he <laughs> he talks about. It. He's like, yeah, it's just like slamming milkshakes. Like he he they got him fat on purpose because they thought it would be funnier. <laughs> like the like the actor they got the actor fat. The legitimate actor oh. got fat on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> that's so sick. I love that a lot. All right. Anyways, he's, again, he's the one you. that owns Wrexham. You know him. Oh oh, Rob McElhinney. Yes. yes. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Thank you very much. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment what's popping. Use code CLNS on Prize Picks. Follow us on podcast platforms. Leave us a review and a rating. And all the same, take it out. 
Hey, thank you very much for listening and watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We're coming at you with something new every single day. We got these pods Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Game recaps the morning after each game, so you're going to have one Friday, one Saturday after the back-to-back here. And then uh, we have live streams for you as well, Talk and Seas Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. We have Sell to the round table, usually 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. This week will be a bit later because we're having a guest. And coming at you live before every single game for a half hour for pregame. So come hang out. Vibes are good. You can find us on Spotify and Apple. If you follow us there, you're going to get our audio pods and game recaps right to your inbox. Leave us a five-star review, too. We would appreciate that very much. You can email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com. That is the way. To do what RJ does, be one of the greats, to get in on the fun, send us your thoughts on the C's, thoughts on the rat list, thoughts on sandwiches, whatever it may be. Thoughts on jury duty. Uh, you can find us on socials at How About Them C's, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Facebook is just the name of the podcast. Our streams are there. They're on YouTube and they're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack Simone NBA. Mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. It's it for us. Bye. Tackle. 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 Tackle.